Uh, Jesus Guzman is a second year MPP, Master's of Public Policy student, currently completing his Advanced Policy Analysis, his APA, that's basically his master's capstone project, uh, with the Marin Economic Forum. And he's focusing on the housing shortage and income inequality. And boy, those, those are important topics. Uh, I must say, by the way, the university is struggling with this because we have a lot of low-income students and the housing problem for the students, actually for the staff and for the faculty, is one of the main problems that we face. And actually one of the reasons that we're building our new building with residences is because it's going to help, in a very small way, help relieve some of the housing shortage around the campus. So this is an extraordinarily important topic. Jesus is committed to public policy and community organizing. Uh, last year, he received a Chancellor's Award for Public Service, and an upcoming issue of Harvard's Hispanic Policy Journal will also feature one of his articles. So please welcome Jesus Guzman. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So uh, good evening, everybody. It's nice to see everyone. Uh, my name is Jesus Guzman. Uh, it's an honor to speak this evening as a member of the Goldman student body. Uh, when I was initially asked to speak tonight, uh, I'll admit my uh, anxiety levels rose well above what would be recommended by my medical provider, and I probably <laughs> aged. Uh, it, I, and my, my wife is a nurse practitioner. She certainly worried for me. Uh, and I probably aged a year or two, but this is a real honor being here with all of you tonight, uh, getting a chance to, to speak and share uh, both. It was an opportunity to reflect a little bit on how I even ended up at Goldman in the first place, uh, and really a, an opportunity to uh, appreciate the fact that I'm, I'm about, let's say, 26 days, I believe, from, from graduating, so <laughs> it, feels, it feels very surreal. <laughs> uh, also, really, the last two years, I've been intensely focused on regressions, economic models, and diapers. And the, the last one maybe sounds a little, little odd, but I'll, I'll explain. So uh, my wife and I had our daughter uh, about a week before finals last year. Uh, and uh, that was to, to add on to the stress of uh, taking finals. Uh, my daughter was born. She's about to turn one tomorrow. Tomorrow's her birthday. So I really want to take the opportunity tonight. One, I know she's not here, but I still want to wish her uh, a happy birthday. My daughter, Victoria. So uh, that, she means everything to me. Um, so just a little bit about myself and my background. Uh, I was born uh, in San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco, Mexico. Uh, and to two wonderful parents of uh, very modest backgrounds uh, from a farm-working rural family, uh, Angelina Martinez and Jesus Guzman. Uh, my parents very early on, when I was an infant, uh, made a very difficult decision uh, and, chose to, and, and immigrated to the United States when I was one year old. Uh, I'm 28 years old now, and I've spent basically my entire life in the United States undocumented. Uh, I came, we came to Sonoma, Sonoma County's uh, to this day what I call home. So I may not have been born in Sonoma County, but Sonoma County is really the only place I know. Sonoma County is a beautiful place for those that have been there. Uh, and I am beyond grateful for the fact that uh, my parents made that sacrifice uh, and make that sacrifice every day, really, uh, to, uh, to have brought me here. So they, they mean the world to me and, and, and everything that. Uh, they've given me. Uh, I will say that growing up undocumented in California, I've gotten to see California change dramatically over the years. So from Prop 187 and Governor Pete Wilson, I've seen California change quite a bit uh, in that time. Uh, I grew up uh, on a small dairy farm in Sonoma. Uh, my dad is a farm worker, my mom is a domestic worker, and she cleans homes. Uh, they both do that to this day. Um, and my younger sister and I, uh, we spent a lot of time out in those open fields, riding our bikes, making forts out of hay bales. Uh, so that was the life I knew as, as a kid. I didn't, we didn't know we were poor uh, at the time. Uh, and that was okay, because we loved, I think, every bit of it uh, growing up on that farm. So when I was thinking about how did I end up at Goldman, 
I had to think about kind of when was the first time that I was sort of politically active. Uh, and I think really throughout my, my childhood, my teenage years, uh, knowing that we were undocumented, that wasn't something that was secret, that was something that was very open out in the air about really the, the issues, the troubles that we had uh, as a family, whether that was uh, friends and family around a dinner table talking about the INS raid at a local Mexican grocery store, or whether that meant that we had somebody that we knew that was pulled over for the fifth time, had the car impounded because they lacked a driver's license. I mean, these are stories that were, were very common. So uh, really the way that I became ultimately politically active was coming from that background, that being my legal status, and many of the people that I knew in my life. And then 2006 happened. 2006, uh, for those that, that remember, 2006 uh, was the year that H.R. 4437, also known as the Sensenbrenner Bill, was introduced in Congress, and that sought to criminalize uh, many of us here without legal status. And so that was my junior and senior year, roughly, uh, and that was really what ignited a whole generation of young people like me to get involved, because uh, basically we were, I think, really kind of coming into consciousness about what being undocumented meant, and it also meant that we were pretty seriously threatened as to whether we'd be able to stay in this country any longer, the only country that we knew. So uh, I became involved uh, very early on, really after that, with the DREAM Act. Uh, the DREAM Act was something that was happening both locally and nationally. Right? There was a DREAM Act in Washington, D.C., and there was also a DREAM Act here in California. Uh, so I got involved uh, with uh, organizing with, uh, with other undocumented youth uh, here. I received my DACA in 2013, and that was kind of one of those moments that was really transformational, really just kind of had to stop. And I, I think I probably laughed and cried for days afterwards when, when I received uh, my, my work permit. Uh, and it was more than a social, because it really, one, it validated all the work that we had done for so many years to push for this policy change, and that we knew that we had enough power, right, as, as, as young people to s change our circumstances, right? That was a validation of all the work that so many people had done um, and it just, it was kind of like Steve Young when he won that first Super Bowl, he kind of get that first, that monkey off his shoulder, right, that, 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 that everybody remember that from the Super Bowl? That, there was a, just a tremendous weight that was just sort of taken off, uh, at least that was taken off of me, and I think probably true for, for a lot of other people that I, that I met, but really that was, a, that was a temporary reprieve, and that was also a moment where I quickly realized you know, my parents are still very much at risk. Um, and they're the ones that made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we're often referred to as dreamers, and admittedly, my parents are the real dreamers. They're the ones that had the vision to come here and make that sacrifice. So it wasn't, it, it was deeply prof and profoundly, I think, uh, hurtful. And, and, uh, and it, it was hard for me to think about and, and um, to have that work permit and have that protection and know that my parents were, were still at risk. So I really asked the question of, uh, to myself as to what it is that I could do, how I could be of service to also help others have that similar protection and, uh, and, and, be, uh, and have something similar. So I started working with a, with a day labor center, the Great Day Labor Center in Sonoma County that same year that I received my DACA in 2013. Uh, and I met a, a gentleman named Abel Enriquez. He was a longtime day laborer. And he, he was dispatched uh, to a job, just like any other day laborer, to do some yard work, $15 an hour, six hours, to do some yard work, clean some gutters. Uh, and uh, during the course of his work, he fell off the ladder from cleaning the gutters and hurt, uh, he fell in and injured his back. It's the kind of stuff that, that happens to anybody. Uh, but it, his, his kind of work arrangement as a day laborer was kind of peculiar, at least in, in the eyes of the law uh, and policy, just because uh, there was really no recourse. There was no workers' comp. There was nothing that was going to be able to help him get back on his feet, any of the lost wages, uh, or any of the medical bills that he was ultimately on the hook for. So that really, for me, became the first time that I, I, I just got obsessed with there is some sort of injustice, uh, and I started doing research. I started doing research. I started digging up homeowners insurance policies, workers' compensation policies. I couldn't tell you what a workers' comp policy was prior to that. Uh, residential labor, and I just, I got really obsessed uh, uh, with Abel's story. Um, and that led me, I was, it was at the same time that I was at Sonoma State, 
uh, I started doing this research, I was encouraged to apply to a fellowship uh, here at Berkeley. Uh, it was a summer undergraduate research fellowship. Uh, and I had the very good fortune of having uh, our faculty, Goldman faculty, Steve Raphael, as my mentor. Uh, and I couldn't have found a better mentor than, than Steve Raphael, uh, who really, one, introduced me to a public policy school. Did not know what that was, honestly, prior to, to uh, meeting Professor Raphael. Uh, and really showed me what policy analysis could do. Uh, and so I applied uh, after I graduated from Sonoma State, and I was very fortunate, again, to be admitted and uh, come to Goldman, and I continued working on this issue about, that, that Abel uh, Enriquez had first brought up uh, my first year here at Goldman last year. And, you know, we, I worked with the UCLA labor occupational health and safety program with the National Day Labor Organizing Network, and I took all the skills that Goldman was teaching me throughout this process and was applying it to this research. We published that report last year. Uh, Assemblywoman uh, Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher from San Diego, she took that research, we worked on drafting a bill, and we introduced a bill in Sacramento, which was kind of a fascinating uh, experience to see kind of a bell story work its way into Sacramento and uh, have, a, have a shot at making some change. Unfortunately, we didn't actually get the bill through. Uh, it's apparently, workers' comp is a far more contentious issue than I had <laughs> first, first thought when we got to the legislature, but nonetheless, uh, it, is, it is a bill that we're hoping to, uh, to continue to put, push forward uh, to try to find some solution. Right? We, we're not claiming that we know exactly what the solution is, but we're wanting, we want to have that conversation and try to figure out what it is that we can do to make right by both the homeowners and by the workers so that we can find something that benefits everybody. So that's a little bit about how I ended up here at Goldman and really kind of once, once, I, once actually being here, I, Goldman opened up a tremendous amount of different sorts of opportunities. I was just speaking with, I believe, Yoshi and a few others about, about this and Really, one of the fundamental components of the Goldman curriculum is both the blend of uh, this core curriculum, we, we learn quite a bit about theory, and also this really very hands-on, practical, client-based projects, IPA, APA, summer internships. Um, and I took the opportunity, at least with the client-based projects, to really go beyond my comfort zone. Uh, so immigration, labor, that's really my, my bread and butter. That's at least what, what I had, was most familiar with. Um, so it wasn't, it, it was a challenge at least to step out and uh, I believe with John we we're just talking about renewable energy and renewable energy, I'll tell you, I didn't know what a utility was before I started this project. Uh, I will say that by the end of doing the project with the World Resources Institute, we were looking at uh, researching best practices in terms of policy recommendations to states, in terms of what we could do to increase the renewable energy penetration. Uh, I knew about feed-in tariffs, PACE financing, renewable portfolio standards. Uh, I didn't know what any of those were at the beginning, but by the start, I was the expert on those for my team, uh, and I did eventually find out what an investor-owned utility was. So uh, that was, uh, it, it, was a real, it was a real opportunity to have, uh, to really venture out and try something new, a different policy uh, that I'll take with me walking out of Goldman, and uh, I'm really hopeful that I'll, I'll continue working in some way uh, with energy policy, really, in my years after, after Goldman. Uh, so now, uh, I am finishing up my time at Goldman, I guess, again, as I mentioned, 26 days away uh, from graduating, feels very surreal, uh, a little sad. Uh, <laughs> But it's also, I think, uh, my wife is ready for me to get a real job. Uh, <laughs> you know, rent has to get paid. Uh, it's, so I'm finishing up my time at, at Goldman, uh, and uh, as Dean Brady mentioned, my, my client uh, as part of my senior capstone is the Marin Economic Forum. And our research focuses on really asking what are the, what are the costs of the housing shortage to Marin? What are the, op the opportunity costs? What are we missing out by not building homes uh, here? In, in, through an equity lens, who's paying the price? Right? And uh, being from Sonoma, Marin is a place I've, I've known uh, in, a, in a variety of ways throughout my life, so it, it's, it's special for me at least to get a chance to work in the North Bay and continue seeing uh, really how this is a regional problem that my generation and for my daughter, my, her generation will continue to, to deal with. So I wanna do at least my part in kind of chipping away 
um, at, uh, at that. And hopefully, we'll have enough housing for her generation um, as well. Uh, ultimately, so just sort of in, in closing, I'll say that ultimately, I think as policy analysts for, for many of us, I think we, some of us have come here with the sense of developing tools so that we can inform decision makers about the evidence, the research, and really trying to make the most informed decisions out there. And I think a lot of us not only want to inform decision makers, but also step into that role and be decision makers. Uh, and my, I, I think there's a lot of folks that will be leaving the Barry after we graduate, whether that means going back home or going to DC. Uh, I'm gonna be in Sonoma. Um, that's my home. I think as an immigrant, uh, having a sense of belonging, having a sense of home, I really kind of burrow myself in that idea that Sonoma is my home and nobody will ever take that away from me because um, it's a special place and that's, and that's what I call home and I intend to go back and stay there and uh, I think Goldman has really prepared me uh, in a very, uh, in the best of ways to be able to go back and stay in Sonoma and, and hopefully make Sonoma a better place for my daughter and, and everybody else uh, afterwards. So. Thank you, thank you everybody so much for allowing me to speak tonight.